Hi, and welcome to Getting Clean on the Prairies. And welcome to my indoor growing space. Today's video is going to be the first of a series of videos I'll be making on indoor growing. And the method I'm going to be using is the Kratky Hydroponics, which is a soil-free type of growing in water. Uh, this video today, I'm going to go in detail of what you need to start your own indoor growing uh, using this method. And I will go through the products you need to buy and things you can use around your house. And uh, so it is uh, mid-October here in Zone 3, Saskatchewan, Canada. So um, it's cold, getting cold outside. The snow is coming any day and it's time to start growing indoors. So I want to show you how you can have lots of fresh herbs, lettuces, tomatoes, peppers. I would highly recommend it even if you are a beginner gardener. It's not that hard, it's not that expensive, and it's just a wonderful way to uh, keep your thumb green during the winter when you can't be outside and to enjoy uh, your own homegrown fresh vegetables. It's, uh, it's amazing. So we are going to go through the steps now on how to grow in water with no soil. So here's what you're going to need to get started with your hydroponics. Um, some of these things you will have to purchase and I'll leave the links uh, to them below. Um, to start with you would need some Rockwell cubes. These are what you use to uh, start your seeds in. For the net cups, there is a variety of sizes that you can purchase. Um, these are a basic size to start with, or the smaller one, which I believe is a one and a half inch, and this is probably a two and a half inch larger one here, three and a half inch. Need some clay pebbles, and these are used to uh, put around the plant to give it stability and to block out light. You will also need to have some hydroponic nutrients. Uh, this is what you're going to be feeding your plants with. It usually comes in two parts, sometimes three. Uh, this particular brand just requires two parts to it for starting your seedlings. And I will put the link to that below as well, where you can get more information and you can also do more research on different, different brands. But these ones have worked good for me. I purchase these uh, locally at Walmart. And you just mix them up in a vinegar jug like this. A four liter jug works good. As far as containers, you just start looking around your house to see what you have. But uh, I would recommend pickle jars work great. They don't need to be too big. These size of net cups fit in them good. Yogurt containers are great as well. You can just cut the hole to the right size and the net cup fits in there. I've grown lettuce in these types of containers and it's worked out really well. As I said, you need to also make sure that you block out the light um, once you have your um, water in here because you will get algae if you do not. So you can cover up your jars with things you can find around the house like this bag that I used. I also took spray paint and just sprayed a couple jars so that they kind of look nice and uh, you, you know they're nice to have in your kitchen space on the shelf. This kind of container here works great, a old uh, Folgers coffee container. You can cut the, your lid to size. It's already um, colored so it will block out the light. Last year I grew uh, bell peppers on this very successfully, so that worked good. Before seeding your uh, seeds into the rock well, you will need to soak it in some water for a few minutes just to make sure that it is fully saturated with water. The seeds are pretty tiny for basil and for lettuce, so I use a toothpick, a wet toothpick, and it's easy to grab one or two seeds and put them inside the rock well. They don't have to be put in too deep, but just inside the hole. I try to put in two or three seeds into each hole just in case uh, 
one of them or two of them doesn't germinate, you've got a better chance of germination. So this tray of seeds is now ready to go under the grow lights. So this is about seven days after they've been under the lights and you'll see the arugula and basil have sprouted. This is day 10. Uh, the paprika peppers are now sprouted and the lettuce and basil are growing and ready to plant. So here we are two weeks into um, after these seeds have been planted and you can see that we got a lot of growth going on and these are ready to put into our jars or containers that we're going to use to grow these plants all the way to maturity. And then we are going to plant these basil. I've also got some thyme and oregano that I, I clipped from my outdoor plants this fall and have had them in water that I just keep changing up and you'll see, I think you can see that there's a lot of roots on these so we'll uh, we'll set them up in some uh, hydroponic solution too and see how they do so this um, I put a two or three seeds usually every time when I'm uh, starting something just in case one or two doesn't come up and this had uh, two basil come up and I'm just gonna leave them both in there if it was something else, um, like maybe a tomato or something, I would thin it out to one, but I think we'll just let them both go. I think they will be able to survive in there. Eventually the roots will be growing out of the bottom here into the water, but for now we need to just make sure that this piece of rock well remains wet and that uh, the roots will keep growing down and eventually start growing out the bottom. So these little uh, plastic shot glasses worked really good for um, starting the seeds I thought because you need to keep these the rock well wet and to just kind of keep track of what you planted. These were easy to write on so that's why I used them. So first of all we're just going to put it right into the net pot like that. And then just like I said, to give it a little stability and to keep the light out, just start putting some clay pebbles around the edges. Keep it in place. And as this basil starts to grow, you can add some more uh, pebbles around the top. But for now, we're just going to shove some in around the edges. see I'm going to use this jar here stick it in there so I think that's probably enough clay pebbles to start with you just kind of check and make sure you can't see that any light is getting in through there so I'm going to mix up a batch here of my hydroponic nutrients and as I said before um, when they're at the seedling stage uh, five mils of each goes into a four liter uh, container of water and I'm just using tap water um, I, they do say that you should uh, make sure the pH level is right but I haven't uh, taken the time to worry about that and um, this is treated water, city water, that um, has been working fine for me. I let it, I usually uh, fill up a lot of uh, bigger jugs and let it sit for a couple days. And uh, so it has been working fine for me. So this is part one, the base. Part two, the 
the all-purpose nutrient. So just give it a good shake. So we're going to fill up the uh, jar here so that it's just reaching the bottom here of the net cup so that the uh, roots can start working their way down but not to uh, drown the plant so you don't want to fill it too full. So you just kind of test it out, put it in, make sure that uh, it's touching the water and it's dripping so that's good. So that is pretty much it. It is ready to start growing. I'm going to put them under some grow lights. Just make sure your pebbles do not uh, get too close to the roots because they're pretty delicate. It's still at the two leaf stage. So this will make you know a pretty jar to have sitting in your kitchen area once these um, this basil starts taking off you can remove it from under the lights and put it in a sunny spot in your kitchen or somewhere in your house if you have it you can leave it under grow lights if you prefer so we will just monitor the growth on this and uh, see how it goes so I'm going to put this under the lights now so the next thing we're going to go and try planting here is an oregano and this is one of the ones that I had uh, taken a clipping from an outdoor plant of mine and I've had it in rooting in some water for a few weeks and it's got a pretty good set of roots on it now. This is the jar that I'm going to use. I'm not going to use any Rockwell with this because it's got a pretty strong stem here and I will just um, support it with some of the clay pebbles. I just want to make sure that some of the roots are coming out the bottom. see I'll just set it in here just start dumping some clay pebbles around it just hold it in the center so that it's growing the right way If you're like me, you'll find clay pebbles uh, rolling all over your house. I'm just going to nip a little bit of the this one little leaf that was a little bit low here. I'm just going to trim it off. Okay. So there you'll see I have it secured with the clay pebbles and plus they are uh, blocking out any light that may get in. And for this jar, I found this little cloth bag. It came with a set of dryer balls in it. I'm just rolling it down a little bit, and as you can see, it'll make a nice cover for this jar. Okay, so we're just gonna fill it up with some water now. And again, we just want it to get up high enough that these roots will start working their way down and growing towards the water. So we'll just make it so that the uh, water just comes up to the bottom here. more pebbles here to keep it standing straight. And you can see from the dripping there that the roots are reaching the water. But like I say, you don't want the water to level to go too high or it will drown the plant. It needs air to breathe just like us, but it also needs water and nutrients. There we have it. 
pretty little oregano plant is going to go under the grow lights now. So here is some thyme that I had rooted from my outdoor plants. It's got some good roots on it. I'm just going to do the same thing as I did with the oregano and try to get those roots poking through the bottom here. Just going to trim up this hard piece here. Just wanted to cut back that hard little stem so got a nice bunch of roots there. See the roots are popping through the bottom. Just give them a gentle pull. Make sure they don't break. I'm going to use this yogurt container for this one. And fill it up with some enough for now. The water in here. And I can see that the roots are reaching the water so that's enough. There is some time ready to go under the lights. Okay, so I just wanted to go through some of the different uh, grow lights that you can use for um, growing your herbs and other plants hydroponically. Um, I have down here some LED utility lights that I purchased at Canadian Tire. They were less than 30 bucks a piece. And they have worked great for um, starting seedlings in the spring when you're getting all your um, outdoor plants started because they cover a nice space. Um, area of space and work good on the shelf. For our herbs that we just planted today, I'm using these clamp lights. They come in a two pack from Amazon and I can uh, leave the link to that below. And they work great for, you know, a small group of plants such as these that we're doing today. And if you check around your house, you may have a lamp that will work. This one has a flexible uh, handle on it so I can can use it as well and you can get it close to your plants and adjust it as they grow. These light bulbs I picked up at the dollar store for I think about four bucks so they work good in a, a lamp if you have one or these type of clamp lights here. And then this is a two, two light system that I've recently purchased from Amazon that also has a clamp so you can move it around your house to wherever you have some plants that you want to give some extra light to and again it works good for starting your seedlings you can put your lights close and adjust them as they grow so as you can see it can be um, doesn't have to be super expensive you can invest in uh, very uh, expensive grow lights if you so choose there's a large variety of them out there but this is what I've been using for the last two winters and has worked good for me. And if you have, like I said, a, a nice south facing window or east facing window that gets a lot of sunlight once you have um, mature lettuce and herb plants growing, you can always move them into a, a sunny spot somewhere else in your house so you can enjoy them. So I hope you found this tutorial video helpful and will start growing your own vegetables indoors using the Kratky method. I would love to hear your questions or comments below and please don't forget to click on the goat to subscribe to watch more of these how-to videos. Thanks for watching.